So uh, this is the, the rain test here. You may be able to see in the distance um, the Anafi AI. Um, so we've been outside for six, seven minutes um, in the rain. This is a classic British rain. Um, it is sort of constant. Uh, it's not really heavy, but there is a bit of a wind about. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's been performing fine. It is does feel counterintuitive to be flying a drone in the rain. I'm used to um, flying fixed wing, um, which are which are fine, um, uh, but with rotor drones, um, it's generally a bit bum clenchy. Um, because you worried if you're caught out and you're trying to fly back and it's got your data and you don't want it to fail and fall onto a canopy. So, um, yeah, we seem to be doing all right here. It's, it's not performing uh, skittishly at all. Um, there's, a, there's a fair amount of rain on the top of it. Um, we'll see how close we get. We can pick it out. Sensor pointed down. It's a little bit gusty on the other hand, so we'll um, just move a little bit away. If we come down and land. Slightly up shot inconveniently. Um, I'll come back up again. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so it seems to perform really well. Again, flying in rain, you wouldn't sit out to fly in rain. It's more, um, at least from a photogrammetry point of view, um, just because ultimately the results will be less than ideal um, if A, the lens gets water on it, or um, B, the, the visibility is reduced. Um, so, it, but it's, a, it's an interesting, um, benefit to have um, again from a commercial point of view it's, it, this sits in a, in a middle position in the market where you have these um, you have the consumer and prosumer I guess drones that are sub two two and a half grand and then at the top end you've then got the more um, uh, commercial um, dedicated commercial drones, so the the Phantom 4 RTK, um, and uh, and then going into the DJI's uh, new M30, and then into the M300. But then you're with the RTK, uh, the P4 RTK. You're about eight and a half grand, I think, with the base station, um, and then into the uh, M30 is around about eight grand, eleven grand if you it's got the thermal camera and then you're looking around about 16 grand for the M300 with like a P, uh, P1 camera so that's a that's a full frame 48 megapixel so this is the 48 megapixel but it's the quad bias system so it's it's a 12 megapixel that can uh, its pixels can work four times as hard in theory but we'll, we'll see when we actually do the photogrammetry test so um, yeah, so it's, it sits there at about four and a half grand. It's sat in the middle. Um, so it, that can be a good place to go to, to be from a marketing point of view. Um, but it's then assessing those benefits to you. So we're, we're obviously going to be covering all the different um, features and, and benefits as we go. But um, th this ability to operate in the rain, I'm, I'm leaving it here to get a little bit wetter and we can see how it goes. But this um, yeah, IP53 rating, as far as I can see, none of the Mavics have any IP rating. Um, purely, obviously, they're not designed for that. Um, so ultimately, you, yeah, you could buy two Mavic 3s for this 
Um, so you've got one as a backup, but whether you want to lose one in the first place, especially if you're doing photogrammetry and, and you're capturing all that data, all the photos, and if you're losing it, you've got to redo that work. So, um, yeah, the, like I mentioned in the other video, the, also the wind resistance is slightly higher in this. I think we're, you were talking about um, maybe three to five miles an hour, um, uh, better resistance or a couple of meters a second resistance and a little bit faster um, so again from a commercial point of view if you can be up in slightly stronger wind and get the job done that can make the difference in getting uh, getting paid or not really um, so yeah so well let's get it back up again it's been while well, I've been wittering on it's been uh, a few minutes of, of rain so let's see it's back up it's not uh, jittery sort of um, 25 there. So yeah, in the rain it's performing really well. Um, not having any frights, it's very stable. So visibility is pretty good. So, you know, if you need to get a job done, I don't think you're going to be filming any weddings in this weather. But if you need to get a job done, cow spotting um, in the rain, it's working, it's good. from a photogrammetry point of view. So we've got up to 50. Um, pretty clear image there. So that's very encouraging that you can get, you can get the job done in a, in a rain like this. Um, that could make a quite, quite a big difference from a commercial operating point of view. So again, it's it's stable, it's good. I'm gonna come in a bit low. Get the sensor pointed down here. You can always work it down after. So I'm just going to go and grab it and then we can have a look closer at how wet it has got. So that's, um, that was a good 15, 17 minutes. There you can see a lot of rain. So that was our rain test. Um, interesting to see um, that it can perform in these conditions. It adds a, a very different dynamic to operating uh, commercially. Um, and that might be of interest to quite a few of you. Um, we'll be following this up with further videos um, on the photography side and photogrammetry side shortly. So, um, yeah, keep watching. So, as a, a little bonus, uh, we have a bit of a heavier grade of British rain on now. So, um, the drone's just been sat there for a, for a minute. So, I thought I'd just give it another quick test in these conditions just to see if we can up the ante a little.
So it seems quite comfortable out there. Um, we're going to go up to height. We've gone up to 30, we're just coming down again. It seems to be comfortable performing in these conditions. So it's certainly comfortable to know it can handle this sort of this sort of weather. Yeah.